Lots to talk about today. Really monumental stuff, in my opinion. We could talk about the growing school community, but I think we've got to lead this off with a really a pride uh, initiative that Ty and I took on about two months ago, and that is Buying Vegas. Buying Vegas episode one launched July 4th, 6 a.m. It's been out in the wild now for about four full days. Uh, Ty, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? I'm actually going to pull up the YouTube ad analytics so other people can look at it. But uh, what are your first thoughts? I'm super proud of you, Olivia. I'm proud to be associated with the project. I want to say that if folks, if you have not watched it, um, go get on to the YouTube channel. Look for Buying Vegas on the uh, One Rental at a Time channel. And I got to say, it, it, it's really awesome because what I love Unlike no other, I'm not willing to do this. Mm -hmm. um, Michael and Olivia were willing to open up their home, open up their personal life, invite you in as the audience to come and see behind the curtain. Like, mm -hmm. And by the way, what I love is I didn't even really know this until I started really spending time with you guys and getting to know Olivia. Like, what a power couple you are and how you guys both like compliment each other and the way that you approach business. And I love how much Olivia is such a great sounding board. So for anybody out there, if you're a husband and wife team or significant other, whatever the case may be, you have your life partner, whoever it is that's important to you, that's going to be on this journey, whether they're involved in the business or not. I think episode one does such a great job of how Michael and Olivia um, work together to really how they built this empire and how they built this dream together. Yeah, we're going to pull up the analytics. I just like people. I like showing people high in the scenes. Uh, before we do that, let's uh, let's welcome Matt to the show. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great. How you guys doing? I'm doing good. Just so you know, I think you're on the wrong mic. Oh, come on. <laughs> I go well, well the thing I go from StreamYard to Zoom 8:30 yeah. to 9 and uh yeah sometimes um, it's well I'll let you work on that we're going to pull up the YouTube You're great bro good to see you Matt. <laughs> Thanks brother. You're good. All right, let me uh let me share this with folks. Actually before as I bring this up Ty I guess the question the whole audience wants to hear and as the producer I'm going to let you make the call. When should we publish episode 2? I think that's interesting. I think in the show comments, I would love to hear from the audience. I think what our original idea was, was we were going to drop the um, drop the episodes on Saturday mornings early. Yep. And the idea that, I mean, we could potentially even drop them on Friday night, you know, something like that. But I'd love to hear from the audience that um, I think Saturday mornings is what we we're going to do and really let it roll because Saturday, I, I think, is an off day for you, right? Correct. It is Saturday is an off day. Correct. Yeah. So do you so think, think so? If we if we so we're we're talking Saturday the twelfth or whatever it is or thirteenth. Yep. Like yep. Okay. And I think it'll be recurring weekly Saturday. But again, I'm not locked into anything. It's all yep. about the audience. It's all about you, the viewer, the listener. So if you have an opinion, please comment. And by the way, I want to say for everybody, for the hardcore one rental at a time family, the community here. I love, I went through all the comments mm -hmm. and I tried to like tap on the thumb up and all that this morning, but I want to yeah. say people lit up the comments on episode one. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Elaine, how you doing? We're just looking at something. We'll get back to the normal hub call in a minute. Just uh, looking at yeah. something we did over the weekend. So again, folks, I pulled up the YouTube analytics for the episode. You can see, uh, I don't normally see this guys, 82% more regular viewers are choosing it helping it increase the reach. So again, we've been teasing this for a long time. That clearly helped. You can see the chart. We are above this gray area pretty significantly. Um, it's still, you know, it's it's definitely calmed down here in day four. We're still getting a couple of views an hour. Um, but as I have learned from uh, Sean Cannell, there's really two things we should look at. One is impressions. Sean likes to see this for a video to go viral or at least viral for you. This should be an 8%. Again, he likes that. And then the last thing he looks at is engagement. And that is time. He likes to see this over eight minutes. Uh, so again, we're, we're close on both. Uh, but yeah, this is, um, you know, something to, in, uh, something to look at. So Ty, I know you're a part of Sean's community. Any uh, stat you want to look at specifically? 
No, I, I, I think the view time, um, for sure. I think, you know, yep. I think that's awesome. I want to say too, that, you know, it's interesting because when you have a holiday weekend, some people have a lot of time to look at stuff, but reality is I was probably the least on my phone and the least yep. on YouTube and listening or watching, you know, content only because I was so engaged with family and busy and going to this barbecue and, you know, whatever the case may be. So, um, I think also, I think there's a little bit of a asterisk on this because of yeah. the holiday weekend. I yeah. think it's going to bump up, but again, we're not attached. I want to say yeah. this was made for the viewer. This was made for you, the audience, the consistent listener. We would yeah. love to hear your comments. So please in the comments, let us know if you've watched the episode. Did you like it? Also, too, if you think we should drop it on Fridays or Sat, you know, Friday evening, Saturday mornings, or yeah. whatever you think, we would yeah. love to hear from you on, uh, on that. So, yeah. Then the last point we'll get out of this get back to normal hub call estimated revenue is a blank. That's because this particular video is not monetized. There is music in it and it's a headache. So I chose not to monetize it. So that's why you see a big goose egg there. All right, let's I come back it. to the show, do normal hub stuff. Uh, I guess we'll go back to you, Ty. You did something yesterday morning, creative financing deep dive, uh, which is now available. If you want to watch the replay, you missed it because you were busy on the weekend. It is available to go back and watch the replay. But what do you think of the creative financing? I, I love your audience. I love the school community. It was great. We had a very interactive. We had um, the REI old guys. Uh, Frank was there. We had, um, Ken and Jenny, uh, Ken Wong, Kenny Wong and Jen, Tam, they were there. I mean, we had such a good, there was a young guy, Joe, who has a portfolio from Dallas. He was really, really smart. Lots of great questions. I actually stayed on. My intention was an hour, maybe 75 minutes. If it was a good call, I stayed on for two hours. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. And it was great. And, and I liked the Sunday morning vibe because there was no rush. Right. So, I would say for anybody out there, by the way, I laughed when Michael said he's not monetizing episode, um, any of the series for Vegas because the music and all of that. But what I want to say is this. This is a movement for the One Rental at a Time community. Michael and Olivia are committed to over-deliver. I think everybody here, Matt, Elaine, myself, everybody who's involved with the channel, um, we're absolutely committed to over-deliver for you. And I would say that literally for anybody get involved with school with the one rental at a time it's 20 bucks a month it's a no-brainer the amount of value that's given there so yeah and we're just about to critical mass i think 200 is the magic number i think this morning we just went over 180 i think we're at 181 or 182 because what's happening already is the community is starting to interact with itself right when you're when you're in the first hundred it's it's really me and a couple of others prodding people now we're having folks like Joe and Frank and others comment and the community is really starting to build. So I'm super excited about that. We're going to go to you next, Matt. Uh, obviously you're a contributor to school once a month mortgage with Matt at the end of the week or end of the month, excuse me. Um, but before we get to that, I got to ask you about the weekend. Were, were, were buyers out shopping or were people taking a 40 weekend off? You know what? I still heard from some buyers. I think that we're in like the beginning of, at least for a lot of, uh, buyers in areas that I'm working, they're they're slowing down a little bit. Like the ones that rushed out to to make a change during the summer, get in their new place before school starts. Like the busiest time is behind us. Yes. And so you know, for 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 one rental at a time, it's great. Less competition, you know, and whatnot. But um, every buyer I did talk to, there was a similar theme. Let's throw 500 at them. Why not? Right. Uh, yeah, I love that. Right. And, I love that. and I love it too. I, I think that sometimes I surprise people when they tell me something like that because I go, yeah, what's the worst they can say? No. And, and so yeah. we're, we're likely to put a deal together on a place that I think was originally at 559 and beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood. Um, it's got some repairs that not everyone's going to be willing and able to do. With perfect perfect for my house perfect for my buying i love those yeah and so so the buyer's going to get it most likely in the low 500s like nothing sells in this neighborhood for low 500 yeah. so yeah it's it's opportunity season um one thing i, I do want to talk about briefly too is like the the doomers are, are are grasping at straws right um there's articles that have been circulating a lot recently 
1.7 million arms written in 2019. <laughs> I saw that. These, these things, dude, CNN picked it up. The KCR three local to me picked it up. The like, I just looked on the internet too. And I saw it like everywhere of 1.7 million homes bought with arms. These things are all going to come due. The, the world's going to explode. Ridiculous. I, I don't, I can't believe this 1.7 million number is true. Cause like I've talked to enough originators to know like amongst billions in production, less than 1% were ever arms. Oh, yeah. And I think the other thing that I, I've got to think is true is that 2019 might've been a year where there was enough um, incentive to do an arm. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you wrote an arm for four and a quarter in 2019? What'd you do in 20 and 21? You refi. Exactly. You refi into two, six, two, five, 30 year fixed. And, th and that's gone. So um, yeah. It's not. Yeah, th these these doomers are grasping at straws. Again, I think it's factually correct. What was it? 1.8 billion or something? 1. What was it? 7 million. Yeah. Arms so there's 1.7 billion of arms written in 2019. Folks, that is factually correct. And totally irrelevant. Because I'm willing to bet a hundred bucks, shoot, a thousand dollars that more than half of those loans were refied to a lower rate 30 year fix sometime later. Again, you got it. These these folks, they're not trying to help you. It's just it's just so bad, so bad. So, yeah, very very cool. We're gonna go to Elaine next. Elaine, I think you had the hottest topic of the week. I heard farmers threatens Governor Newsom to exit California. What the heck is going on there? Farmers gonna leave California? I don't think so. That's the threat is they just want their rate increases done faster, quicker. And if not, then they will. But I think the consumer is the one that's getting the worst part oh, of yeah. that, which, uh, you know, they're either they're getting renewals uh, on their policies, but they're getting renewals with paid in full uh, only when they right. used to be on auto pay for, forever. And then, but you know, the consumer is dealing with people like what uh, Matt was talking about. <laughs> You're hearing things that is that are so far out of this world. I just heard this girl say that you can expect only a one percent increase in California <laughs> rate increases. Listen to this: Are California auto insurance rates going to be increasing soon? What's the forecast for car insurance costs? Well, good news. Car insurance is expected to increase by less than 1% over the next year, thanks to <laughs> California's tight control over insurance rate increases. However, starting January 1st, at... <laughs> Man, so, you can, you can be put careful what you hear on the internet. <laughs> I, I heard that and I was like, what? Yeah, that's crazy. So, hey, I poked a little around this farmer things. What I heard, and again, I'm trying to tie this into conversations yeah. you and I've had over the last six months. I believe farmers is going to whoever is the insurance board or whatever the hell they're called, yeah. basically yeah. saying they want something like a 30 or 40 percent increase on average. Uh, and even more for condos. I think condos, I think homes are like 38 percent and condos were 48 percent, something like that. And normally speaking, that's not allowed in California because of all these caps. So the thing, Michael, that you have to keep in mind is that's only regarding homeowner, uh, owner-occupied properties. We're not talking about tenant properties. So when your your show is, you know, these investment properties, these are tenant-occupied properties. They're not even writing those right now. Um, they're not. So they're writing. only. So farmers is only writing owner rock. They are not writing investor loans Correct. or yeah. policies. Excuse me. Correct. So th those are regarding owner occupied properties. So your home and auto, not your tenant. Uh, not wow. your properties. farmers. You're evil. I'm just kidding. I understand <laughs> what you're doing. So basically, farmers. So again, all right, just tying back past conversations. Gavin yeah. Newsom knows he has a problem. He yes. has instituted some. Blah, blah, blah. That says yes, we got to go gotta faster. Be. Yeah. And we got to allow these things. And it farmers really like up to our commissioner. And he is, I think, uh, in over his head. It it, it seems so. Um, yeah. But it's taking a little while, but do not <laughs> expect a 1% increase. 
no, it's not coming. A thirty yeah. to fifty percent increase. There's yeah, no it, way it, around yep. it. There's especially on investment properties, and especially if you have properties that are over twenty years old. Yeah. That bottom line, unless you have any kind of um, receipts for new plumbing, mm -hmm. uh, new electrical, and new roofing, if you don't have those, expect a thirty percent minimally. Yeah. 40% yeah. increase. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, lots of us like to think about insurance companies being greedy, you know, auto insurance. It's funny. My, my, Mer my Mercedes is damn, it's 11 years old now, hundred thousand miles, 103,000 miles. My insurance went up like 20%. Yeah. Um, and again, why? Because again, it costs more and more to maintain things. I could not imagine having a newer, you know, six figure car, and what those insurance premiums would be, it'd be freaking insane. Well, you'd be surprised on the uh, auto insurance uh, side. The newer cars are getting sometimes better rate. Uh, and they're getting okay. better rate because they have more safety features. Oh. Um, so with the inflation side going up a little bit uh, because of, um, you know, the, the um, you know, having to get the parts and stuff like that. But especially yep. if you have an electrical vehicle, <laughs> Teslas are almost difficult i'm mean, impossible to write right now yeah uh, it's, it's again yeah but, these evs yeah. Right? yeah yeah but otherwise uh with the safety features of like a normal vehicle just a lexus a toyota a camry a, a honda uh they're not that bad actually yeah. like going from like a 2019 to a 2024 2025 um they're not that bad Okay. Uh, because of the safety features. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Very cool. That really does help the uh, liability part of it. Yeah. Well, somebody is in California and they want to get an insurance broker. They want to get some quotes. They want to just understand what's going on. Uh, Elaine, it's 559-696-9196, right? They just text you and start a conversation? Yeah. 559-696-9196. Um, that's my cell phone. You can text it or call. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, last question on this: Farmers leaving California. When do you think we hear? Is this, is this, you know, the next days, weeks, months, quarters? Any idea when farmers might actually pull out if they don't get what they need? They could take up to three months, three to six okay. months, I would say. Right. So we're months. It's not going to happen overnight. And it, and if it happens, right when they announce the news, they still have to give you at least ninety days. So, yeah, yeah. you'll okay. have. To Folks, what I would recommend, if you have farmers, it doesn't hurt to reach out and get a broker in your pocket just in case. Elaine is at the hub. She does it for us. She's actually helping Olivia right now with a policy on one of her units. So uh, she is out there. She helps us all the time. So we're going to go backwards now. We're going to go back to Matt, the mortgage guy. Uh, again, I think the second half of the year is going to be slow. I think the election, I think rates. Um, I just think, I think the average consumer is pissed off, frustrated, scared. And that does not bode well for people buying a home. Thus, opportunity. If you happen to be a contrarian, what do you think? Oh, for sure. And and I'm I'm seeing the people that are doing the work and they're ready for the opportunity. And then I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are like, I can't wait till there's opportunity. Then I'm gonna start researching my market. Then I'm gonna start getting myself pre-approved and running numbers. Market research. Do the work. Pre-approved. Know your numbers. Do all that stuff now in case there's an opportunity. If you have all that knowledge, no opportunity presents itself, that's fine. But if opportunity presents itself and you don't get yourself prepared, the truth of the matter is you won't even know that it, it hit you, right? Opportunity yeah. will fly by and you'd be like, did I miss something? Well, mm -hmm. yeah, everybody that was prepared went out and got some some great deals. And so, you know, I can't say it enough and, and I enjoy that stuff so much. Talking to consumers, nerding out with Excel spreadsheets. When somebody tells me like, Hey, like I'm going to play with this Excel spreadsheet for a long time. Like it, it brings joy to my heart. So great mortgagebroker.com. That's how you connect me and my team. And I encourage you. Another thing I'm seeing a lot from buyers is they get themselves pre-approved and they don't poke and prod. Like mm -hmm. that's what we're here for. Poke and, and, and I tell people on our intro call, I'm going to give you some information, but I don't know what questions you're going to have. You don't even know what questions you're going to have. Go out in the wild, start looking at property, start having discussions with your real estate agent. Oh, maybe in this neighborhood, I could buy it 500 or, you know, this one's been on the market for 40 something days. Maybe I can get 20,000 in credits. Start figuring out those type of things and then bring me the questions 
and we'll talk about it from a financing standpoint. But I don't know that future question, and neither right. do you. As you go out there and start to look and start to analyze deals, bounce it off of me because I love that analyst more than yeah. anything else. So uh, greatmortgagebroker.com. Uh, greatmortgagebroker.com. Again, folks, at the end of the day, what have, if you watch my channel, We've been hoping for, begging for a slower market. You've seen me over the years take action in slower markets. I am just that contrarian. It's here. I actually think this slower period is going to take the rest of the year. We're going to get through the November election, then the holidays. Then we're going to see where we're at. No idea if it takes off to the moon or dumps after that. No idea. But uh, I do think the slow season is longer than normal because usually it starts October 1st, October 15th. I think it's already started. I put it's that here. on record. It's here. Real quick, here. Mike, I, before I forget, I was going to tell you about my sunburn because uh, uh -oh. it's 114 in California. And me and Elaine and Ty are all in California. But I think you guys broke a record in Vegas. You guys were yeah. 120 yesterday? 120. I got to tell you, so I've been in Vegas a long time. 100 doesn't bother me. 110 really doesn't bother me. 120 sucks. Yeah. <laughs> the market is cold and the weather is hot. Yeah. And oh, by the way, I'm training for a marathon. So let me just tell you, my treadmill is getting a lot of miles on it because I am yeah. not running outside in 120 degrees. F that. I get out at 5 a.m. Dude, it's still 90 degrees at 5 a.m. or 85. Or it's like, nope, not happening. Fun, I'll train on my fact, treadmill. When I trained in 21, it was summers running on the bike trail, which was black asphalt. So just the sun radiated. Um, I got grabbed though when you get off this call because I, I, I know I what almost, it is. I almost yeah. hurt. I almost, I almost hurt myself. Don't out do there that. Running huh? in that heat. That's nuts. Well, Ty, we're gonna we're gonna end where we started with the man, myth, the legend, third plus years experience, ultimate go giver. Did a school community free, uh, you know, free six hour master class. Then he goes on to be the producer of Buying Vegas. How do you want to finish this up, man? You're such a go giver. A lot of opportunity. I would say, folks, just stay involved. If you've not watched the episode, go watch episode one of Buying Vegas. It's right here on the One Rental at a Time channel. Michael shares, him and Olivia share so much just detail of how they would approach a brand new market as a new investor. Also, for folks that have been around a long time, go check out the school community. Give it a, sh give it a shot. Check it out. Mm -hmm. 20 bucks a month. So much great content there. Um, Michael, proud to be a part of the one real at a time community. Thank you for all that you do. Yeah, guys, go, go during school, give it a month, see what you like. You get all these millionaire conversations every week. You get a, uh, accountability group now once a week with Frank old guy, REI, you get all the free education. There is no better value on the planet. And folks right now, if you're still watching, do you want episode two at 6 PM Pacific Friday or 6 AM Saturday morning? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks, guys.